Argentina may be the favourites for this game, but they've appeared in only one Rugby World Cup quarterfinal. That was in 1999. They were flogged by the French, 47-26. Scotland, on the other hand, historically, well, they've been in all the Rugby World Cup quarterfinals. They've won only one of them. They beat Western Samoa 28-6 in 1991. And the Scottish coach, Frank Haddon, well, interesting little synergy about this particular game. Back in 2005, in November, was Frank Haddon's first defeat as a Scottish coach, and it was against Argentina. Here he is. Over the last couple of years, we've played against almost everybody in the world of rugby, and you know we're familiar with uh, what to expect tonight. Uh, we've also practiced over the last couple of years uh, different styles of playing, uh, and we think at this stage uh, we've got enough tools in our toolbox uh, to make it life very difficult for the Argentinians. Well, that's not the first time Frank Haddon has used that analogy, so he is strongly hinting that there is something the Scots are going to show us tonight that we have not seen before at this Rugby World Cup. And as we've said, looking at the results of the previous quarterfinals, that could well be the case. Marcello Lafreda, well, what discipline he's instilled into this Argentinian side. They're the only quarterfinal team not to have received a yellow card yet at this Rugby World Cup. Here he is. We have to play well. That is the only way we are going to, to win. No? Uh, at the moment, we, we train a lot. This, this week, we need some rest because there, there was so hard the other games and we need some rest. We are very good at the moment and uh, the players are confident in, to play well and uh, I hope they, uh, they are going to play like this. Well, that obviously wasn't Marcello. The assistant coach conducted the interview. Maybe he didn't feel his English was strong enough or maybe uh, his running battle with officialdom at the Rugby World Cup has something to do with it. We're not too sure, but anyway... Rupert McCall, Ben Darwin and Ben Tune are about to bring you all the action from Stade de France. Thank you, Woods. A back to where it all began. Stade de France, where Argentina beat the French on opening night. They return in this knockout quarterfinal, the fourth and final match of that nature across the weekend. We've seen some wonderful rugby. Talk about tools in the toolbox. I've got two of the best sitting alongside of me. Ben Darwin and Ben Tune. what do you make of this game? Well, I think, uh, I think we're going to see a battle of wills more than anything else. It's one of the rare occasions you, where we find two teams with very similar game plans. Who executes that game plan the best on the evening will end up winning. Both game plans are based around field position and then waiting for opportunities that the opposition give you from their own mistakes. Well, first things first, I think it's fantastic that you've got a game in Paris that doesn't include the French. It's got 80,000 people here turning up. There can't be that many Scottish and Argentine supporters, so it's a lot of the French who are here to enjoy themselves. A good clear night in Paris, as you can see. It hasn't rained this weekend, and uh, it should pave the way for a, a wonderful game of rugby. We hope you saw Marcelo Lofreda speaking with the fans from Argentina. Joel Judge is the referee. Augustine Pichon, okay. one of the most experienced Pumas, and Jason White for Scotland. Uh, we can kick. Yes. Okay. Can we decide which way? Three minutes before. Twenty minutes. Whenever you want, you want to come in, so the same. Thank you very much. Okay. So a good game is wished upon the captains. Argentina wins that battle, and how much does it mean to the fans back home? Well. They have gone into overdrive on rugby back in Argentina. This big football match, El Superclasico, no which is one of the biggest on their agenda between Boca Juniors and River Plate, has been rescheduled so that the country can watch this match for the quarterfinal. Well, having been Argentina, I can tell you that is absolutely massive. That is the biggest day in sport of the year. It's like moving the Melbourne Cup by three hours so we can watch the Australian cricket team play. I'm interested by this tactic by the losing team of the toss. Jason White on this example, P shot, wanted to kick off. Jason White wanted to wait until he gets out on the field to decide which way he wants to run. I wouldn't have thought 20 minutes is gonna matter a hell of a lot in terms of what the conditions are doing by then. Probably a, bit, a little bit of gamesmanship more than anything else. You see P shot running out. He's got, does a great job of captain. Apparently though, the World Cup commemorative coin's been causing some difficulties because both sides look almost identical so they can't tell which side they've tossed to, but let's get to the game. The Scottish, they've got to perform out of their skins tonight. Let's get to the game. 
Scotland beat Italy last week. Argentina defeated Ireland. Once again, it's a Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere clash. The, hem the hemispheres collide. The nerves in, the stomach, the stirring music. The battle about to begin. If you were to say to either of these two sides before the tournament that, that either of them are going to play a semi-final of the World Cup, as one of them is, you'd have pretty long odds against it. So they're making history. They're both passionate sides. They're both desperate to make it to that standard. Scotland haven't been there since 91. Argentina, Argentina have never been to a semi-final. I think Argentina going into this game with better form under their belt. However, we've seen the other Northern Hemisphere teams, France and England, prove those odds wrong on big occasions. So the teams take the field, another big occasion. There is no doubt about that. The Argentinians tonight playing for their teammate, Martin Gaitan, nicknamed Blackie. In a match leading up to this tournament, he fainted in the dressing room with heart problems, but they are still playing for their mate. And that name is on the T-shirts they warm up in. Martin Gaitan and victory on the minds of the Argentinians. Scotland the Brave, inspired by their anthem any minute now, Flower of Scotland, will be formidable as opponents. The Argentines have this amazing opportunity. They've come this far. Can they go that much further and maybe all the way in this tournament? They've got a team that has the confidence in themselves to do it. They've been the dark horses of world rugby for a long time and all of a sudden, they seem to be proving their potential. Stage is set. Oh, no. 
Well, nothing much more need be said about what it means to stand up and play for your country tonight. The Scottish team with an Australian flavour, Dan Parks at 10, Nathan Hines in the second row. Another Australian out there this evening, Stu Dickinson, running touch, Chris White on the other side, Joel Judge in the middle and the Pumas. Well, the Pumas just have to find a way to counter the boot of Dan Parks. they got some pretty handy feet themselves with Coletto and Hernandez. Field position, I'm sure, will be on the agenda of both teams. Well, Joel Judge would have stayed up last night to watch France defeat New Zealand in the second quarter final, I'm sure. And the streets of Paris have been alive with song. No, France aren't playing in this game. They played last night and they're still singing. An early drop goal from Hernandez. The attempt shaves the right hand up right. We've well, seen the importance of field goals in this World Cup. Well, in World Cups in general, let's face it. Ooh, tell you what, that was pretty close and a handy shot from that far out. So one Martin Hernandez from the Stade Francais Club. An early field goal attempt just to the right. And Dan Parks gets an early kick on the ball as well. Hernandez get used to that tactic. Coletto and Hernandez get chased, but Rory Lamont bounces back from that head knock last week against Italy. Does well for Scotland the Brave. He shot. He's played in three World Cups, been to four. He was a member of the squad in 95. Didn't receive a cap. Tell you what, if you're playing in the back three of any team coming up against Argentina, your entire week would be high ball receipts under duress. Absolutely, and, this, and the Scottish back three, Ben Darwin, spent a good half an hour at the end of training, every training session doing exactly that, building bombs. So the boy from Wagga Wagga makes an early impact in the lineout, Nathan Hines. Spoke about how Rolly Moore was so pivotal to the Scottish game. They've lost their setup here. Jim Hamilton fragmented from that rolling ball, but now Dan Parks. That's a good old Gary Owen. Webster applied the pressure, and now Argentina. Recompose. He shot juggles. The pass to Longo Ilia. The big right boot of Hernandez. The Scots play on. An indication that they might want to run it tonight. Chris Patterson gave chase, but Juan Martin Hernandez up to the task. He shot flings it out to the right. Ignacio Corletto. The whistle is blown and Joel Judge has an early penalty for the Pumas. I think he's picked the Scottish there for being offside. They seem to be very close to the kicker on that occasion. And how many midfield bombs? Six have we seen so far in the first three minutes from either side? Yeah, it's, yes, it was Dan Parks. Off the mark a little bit, over-anxious. The boy from Dundas. And that from Hernandez defies belief in his own mind. Well, that's a crucial mistake. I mean, that's schoolboy rugby stuff. You kick that ball out, you've got yourself a line out, your feed. Probably the first sign, really, this whole tournament we've seen Hernandez lose his composure a little. I'm sure it was you can't just off the side of the booth. You cannot underestimate the situation out there and the fact that there will be nerves and adrenaline are plenty pumping through the bloodstreams of both teams. You see Yay and Murray there wearing a really different type of boot. It's a low cut. 
with rubber underneath and then studs off the bottom. And it's like wearing a sand shoe with studs on the bottom. And sometimes when you get that low cut boot, the foot will slip out and the boot will start to fall apart as it has there. So, after the butchered kick by Hernandez, Scotland now get a chance to attack from the scrum. So Mike Blair has the ball in his hands for Scotland. The little halfback from Edinburgh. I'll be watching this game in Edinburgh, Buenos Aires, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Crutch, Perth, Long Melbourne, Crutch. Hobart. Pass, all around the rugby world. Let's throw Darwin into the mix because he's sitting right next to me. And the Pumas. Well, Murray there, collapsed scrum in the first couple of contacts. Again, he just seems to be trying to head towards the middle. I really like how tight, though, the second row of the Argentines are. Midfield bomb again. Midfield bomb. Contapomi chases. It's cleaned up by the Scots. OK, advantage. Look on the right. So the Pumas have knocked that on, but Advantage over. Dan Parks finds his touch. Gee, he's striking that ball well. I know I've been saying it a lot. I think that call must have come from the touchy that that was a knock on because you could hear the referee say, OK, accepted that decision and then gave advantage to the Scots. The Argentinians are actually competing a lot more in the air with these midfield bombs than what they have previously. Normally they just sit back a little bit, wait for the opposition to take the ball, come to ground, and then three or four of them come through and hit him with a brick wall in defence. So I think that was caused by that try they scored against Ireland where they did make the catch from the offset. They're keen tonight, the Pumas. Fernandez Lobe. One of the Lobe brothers and another one of these accidental offside penalties which that really hindered the defence all that much. It's a technical issue. You can hear about six of the Scots yell in protest as soon as it happened. You can see Stu Dickinson there in the background as a touch judge. So Blair and Parks back inside Webster leaves it behind. An early mistake there, Frank Haddon. No advantage. The Scottish coach wouldn't be too happy with that. It's nice to see at least the very least the Scots there showing their intent. Parks shifting the pass. And let's hope that doesn't this discourage them from playing rugby rugby further Touch. down the track. Touch. Good old yes. OI move as we called it at Crosby Park. Outside centre back in. Side off the 5-8. Webster was unable to take it. Longo Ilya off the back of the pack for the Pumas. And Pichot to yes, Hernandez. And once again, high end of the Paris guy. Lamont fumbles this time. It's Sean Lamont. One of the brothers, Pichot. A hurried little grubber through. Blair keeps it in the field of play. Agula plays on quickly. The chip and the chase from Argentina. That is spread from the Scots. And there's plenty of them in the crowd supporting. Patterson lays it back. Blair comes away, runs behind the referee. Stay back. So the Scots threw their skipper, Jason White, pick and drive, but the defence was solid. This time Parks again. He grew up in Dundas. Yeah, Dan Parks, the big right boot, all began in a game that he used to play for himself, kicking between two telegraph poles back in the suburban streets of Sydney in Dundas. Argentine rolling more. It's getting some momentum already. So Roncero is in there. Big Rodrigo. You might remember the tackle he made on Sebastian Chabal on night one. He's still out there doing the tough stuff and the rough stuff. And they're still putting up the midfield bombs. Lamont and Contrapomi fight for it. Brother to brother. Felipe Contrapomi, the little brother. Well, the crowd may boo at the tactic, but you can't blame them for doing it. Because every time it is a genuine contest in the air, 
Argentines on this occasion get the ball back and they now find themselves deep inside the Scottish half. Well, after their disappointing performance, the 2003 Rugby World Cup, the Argentinians banded together as brothers and decided that in 2007 it would be different. This won't be easy though, Scotland, with the sniff of the semi-final. They haven't played in one since 1991. A night that Gavin Hastings will probably not want to remember. A kick. He would kick 999 times out of 100. Or 1,000 at least. Let me get the maths right. But what a wonderful player he is and was Gavin Hastings. And yesterday, Johnny Wilkinson surpassed his all-time Rugby World Cup point-scoring record. Hi, Joel. Well, flat out by the Argentines in attack here. Scott's matching them. Good off top ball on a five man. Albacete. It's strong from Argentina. Fernandez Love. Now the backs, P shot. Fernandez the short pass to Toledo back on the angle. Webster and Lamont met him. Back to the right. The forwards. Laying the platform for the Pumas. They've done it well. Now the box kick from Pichot, and it's clever. Bounces up for Lamont, and he really has no option but to do well, run it inside and find Webster. That was a great option. Now Webster's kick. Turns Hernandez around, and went Coletto's up in the line. Hernandez drops back to fullback. A little chip and chase. Hernandez keeps it alive. He's felled, but Judge is happy to play on. So Borges this time retrieves for Argentina. Not such a great kick from Lucas Borges. The pass from Blair looked forward. Patterson kicks ahead. Forward pass. And we will come back for the forward pass from the touch judge. On that side, Chris White. Thank you. Forward pass. It's a reasonably enterprising play here by the Scots. Just an inch forward. A lot of chipping and chasing going on at the moment. The defensive lines of both teams pretty sporadic. Well, Hernandez, of course, plays his club rugby at full back, so he's more than comfortable building those kicks from the opposition and counter-attacking. Looked like he took a little page out of the Argentinian football slash soccer side there, uh, Hernandez. Popped a small check that uh, certainly made it look dramatic. That was a good phase of play from both sides. Now, tell me how you make that decision. No, straight. He's about to. Doesn't mean it's right. No, you must push straight, not on not the not on the hooker. And yep. shoulder up. Yep, okay. Thank you very much. Oh. What's he got in there for bearing in or something? Well, he's, he's taking on. the inside channel, but the thing about it is if you've got a one that's up against you, that also uh, charges you across. You're both going to end up pointing inside, and they tend to blame the threes for that. So sometimes you can't win. Oh, that was that's oh, a good kick, though. You, know, you, you could say that if Scotland took that on the ball and ran it back, it was a bad kick. It ended up being good for Hernandez. He worked every inch of the field. Well, the French word for scrum is melee. And at times, it's been appropriate. His body's pretty straight there, but the, the Roncero's hips are just popping to the outside. Anyway, another time. And another line-out, but this is not just another line-out. This is significant for Argentina. The man was pulled down. There must be advantage. Yes, there is. But the Pumas want to score a try. He shot back to the right. They scored against the Irish down that channel. The Desma Aracena. Yeah. A little bit of lip service from big Nathan Hines. <laughs> well, I can't understand a Scottish accent or Australian. Mind you, Nathan Hines is Australian, so it'd be an Aussie and an Archie. He likes a bit of the rough stuff, Hines, doesn't he? He's played 47 tests for Scotland. This is 48. One. Fair penalty there. I would have assumed if the Argentines had taken that clearly from the line out, they would have set up the rolling more and had a decent crack. 
they got the penalty in the end. The chance for points. Okay. To Felipe Contepomi, this prolific point scorer for Argentina. After 13 minutes, sizes up. The first opportunity for points. And for Argentina, that is wide. To Dan Parks, which ensures that his players are on side. The spiraling rock kick. He shot. Finds the kicker. Coletto gives chase, but that was so very well done from Mike Blair. Courageous take, and even more courageous. We get to see it again, hopefully. Absolutely exposed himself to the opposition in his attempt to get the ball back onto his side. That, when forwards see that, it's like a red rag to a ball. Let's have a look. Watch here. He hits the deck and watch ball straight back. Those ribs. See a couple of forwards, Argentinian forwards, frothing at the mouth. So bravery from Blair. And that provides this chance to Dan Parks. He close to 50 metres out. He has the long-range boot on this evening. Chris Patterson is another option. I wonder if Chris just doesn't want to wreck his 100% kicking record. Well, Dan Parks has 100% as well oh, in this know. tournament. So two pretty good options to go by. Will it be maintained? Parks. Has he got the distance? Yes, he has. 100% for Parks. So Scotland draw first blood in this fourth and final quarter final. Jim Hamilton not so clever with the restart. No, restarts are absolutely crucial after you finally get points on the board. You want to take that cleanly, set a good platform, and then boot the ball down the other end of the field. The Scottish now find themselves on the defensive. So Roncero exchanges hands, and Albacete comes away with it. Through the backs, Webster kicks it ahead. But the whistle of judge sounds in the distance. Knock on by the tucker. Well, knock on by the attacker, Take off. so... Chris, the mark. He didn't see that Scotland gained an advantage out of that kick through. It's 3-0 to Scotland. So Alistair Hogg receives attention. will look for the knock on from Scotland. Well, this is what has confused me, because the referee, I swear, said knock on by the attacking side. Maybe there was okay. a knock down there from the defence. Yeah. I Crash. think the referee just cut his lines up. Yeah. Catch. Balls. Engage. All things considered, this is a wonderful position on the field to be attacking from. Gonzalo Longo Ilia to Pishot. Here they come through Corletto. They find the 22. And maintain possession. A pass from Pishot. Hernandez Love. Met solidly. Rodrigo Roncero drives with the it, assistance it, 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 of the big boys behind. Argentina. They're at the end of the field where they okay. like to play. But they've knocked it on. So the Scots are doing well at the breakdown. They're doing well at the breakdown and they're defending the pillars either side of the breakdown very well. So Webster's pass inside to Lamont. I think advantage is over. Blair and Parks once again and the right boot of Dan Parks out to the open. That's his preferred side. Scottish for mine are looking pretty good. They're defending well, they're taking smart options. The Argentinians seem a fortune off the pace. 
Not quite the urgency we've seen from them in the last couple of games. Oh, on Sarah there trying to sneak your little back door. He had a good angle on it, door. He did. What you do is you look to whether the first defender in the line out is facing the middle, and if he is, you've always got that opportunity because he's not going to see it. Well, Joel Judge was asleep on that occasion, and this time, in the conventional manner, Hernandez Lobe brings it down. Lazy this World Cup. Every time you see a rolling ball, you see a body of the opposition underneath it. It's a pretty brave thing to do. There is another one. The Argentines, they're very patient in everything they do, whether it's pick or go or rolling more. They'll just hang around and wait. They, they've got a pretty good recycle. They've backed themselves in this aspect of the game across the tournament. The ball there for Pichot now. And then there's a short pass to Contapomi, but Dewey was waiting in the centres, wrapped up his humour opponent. Contapomi wrestles it back. His brother Felipe was under an illness cloud during the week, recovered from the flu. At the moment, maybe the Argentinians, it is, it is, just a tiny okay. little bit gun shy. That's what I mean by that patience. They'll wait until they've got the setup they want. They're happy to pick and go one or two yards. If you hold on to the ball, the opposition can't score. And they've got a lot of faith in their recycle. So P shot. Hernandez comes left. Hernandez Love made the pass to Agula. And they're going backwards to Pumas. Scotland are doing what Argentina have done to every side of the play so far. They're making pests of themselves oh, and trying fine. to rattle the Argentinians and doing a pretty good job of it. Well, it has frustrated the Pumas. This time Hernandez looked for some brilliance. Knocked back from Patterson. This time the Scots play the patience game. Parks hoist it high. You can see the fiery blonde hair of Lamont chasing through, but Augustine Pichot, like a good captain, leads by example. Back inside, Contrapomi towards the traffic. He was met by Jason White. One, no, it's fine. So these sides wrestling with each other at the moment. Oh, One oh, waiting oh, for the other oh, oh, oh. to give the glimpse okay. of an attacking opportunity. Maybe it's here with Hernandez. He has a dash himself, Juan Martin. Oh. And the penalty. High tackle. No, Bob. Bob. Referee explaining that. Time off. Oh, oh. Oh, they're going to push and shovel it around. I know my whistle. Oh. Well, Hernandez resenting the tackle. Come on, question is, okay. did he fall into it? Nathan Hines looks guilty as charge, Your Honour. Okay. Well, everything's high from up there, isn't it? Come on. Big man on little man. And uh, this for Felipe Contraponi. It, it was. It was high. Contact made with the neck. Anything that involves anything to do with the neck these days, referees are pretty heavy on. Well, we had a okay. chat with Stu Dickinson during the week and he confirmed that fact. Even if a player or an attacking player is slipping into it, if contact is made with the head or neck, it will be a penalty. And Joel Judge made that decision immediately. And the way he explained it was that if any player ducks, then otherwise it would give players free reign to attack the head of that player. So you've simply got to accept it and you've got to drop your height no matter how much they do. So can Felipe Contopomi make amends for his last miss? He lines it up. Bisects the sticks. It's three all. So we're all square at Stade de France. That trumpeter is everywhere. Patterson signals the charge from the Scottish pack. Ledesma Aracena does well. Gonzalo Longo was the back of the pack. Charge down from Scotland. Play on. Corletto. 22. Has no option 22. to ground the ball and will come back for a 22. 
Well, off the charge down, it's absolute lottery as to where the ball bounces from that stage. So Ireland, uh, Argentina extremely lucky to get out of that. They were lucky. Good pressure from the Scots, though. Not going to make it easy for the Argentinians to get a decent kick away. It's already in this match over 30 kicks. There's another one. Not sure if that goes on the stats, but that's a big drop kick from Hernandez and Lamont. Hoist it high, chases through. No pressure on Hernandez, but he slips over. The grubber along the ground. Great skills, Parks. Patterson steps inside. That's the way I want. So Blair looks for Lamont once again. That's Sean Lamont, the uh, older brother of Rory. Sorry, Rupert, I saw then Dan Parks pointing to the sky. So Parks has signaled his intention, and Ben Tune had it 100% spot on. And he's high in the sky. The Cunis let it bounce. This time they come away with it through a gula. And the penalty Rexform, again. Right form. And then the ruck. So to be honest, we didn't expect a spectacular <laughs> affair of the running rugby variety that perhaps the Fijians promised this afternoon. It has been a kickathon in the true sense of the word. I think the statistic might be telling in this game, and we'll never know what it is, but it'd be high bomb recovery. <laughs> how many of the ones you catch and how many of the oppositions you get back? It's going to be interesting to see who strays from their game plan first, because it really comes down, as I said, to a battle of wills. So the game of chess continues, and the Argentinians playing for territory, that is the reason behind the kicking game, and they have it right here, right now, an attacking line-out. The Desma Aracena, one of the few balding forwards for the Pumas, finds Fernandez Lobe. Away free, away free. It's good. Away fine. Bustling stuff from Scotland to count them all. So once again, it's a game of inches for Argentina, and they look to use their patience and their bulk and their strength. He shot the, the little traffic cop at the back. <laughs> Alistair Holt makes a nuisance of himself. But Ledesma comes away with it. Scott's doing a good job of setting themselves nice and low for the pick and go. Going to reduce the options of the Argentines. So the Pumas transfer the point of attack for the rolling wall, and this time Fernandez sets himself for the drop goal option. That's off the side of the right boot. Good, good pressure from the Scots. They read it. And they play on through Lamont. Fell on his head last week. And he's bounced back to join his brother in the field of battle. Oh. Well, this is again a technically, this is called bridging. Squeeze, squeeze Having said that, position. if you're in the Scottish forwards who've just worked so incredibly hard squeeze to deny the Argentines everything, you'd go over and slap them up in the face. Don't do that. Don't run it back in that sort of opportunity. Oh, true. Yeah, sorry. Ben Dane, you're dead right. His, his option was totally wrong. I was more commenting, I commenting, I guess, on the decision of the referee. I mean, you would see that ten times at least in a game. Now, now bridging is the man coming straight over and placing the ball between his legs. The referee will argue there that he's not allowing the opposition a fair go at getting their hands on the ball, which technically he's right, but... He's laying the egg, isn't he? He so is laying the egg. And as I said, technically he's right, but gee, we see a lot of it. It's a, it's a pretty recent thing, making it illegal bridging. It was massive in the 99 World Cup. So the decision from Lamont in the first place is one that he'll regret. It gives Contopomi this penalty kick to take Argentina to the front. Twenty-eight minutes gone, and that is the case. The Pumas up by three. Three. So Felipe Contopomi 
spent a lot of the week in bed with the flu. He's recovered and he is responsible for the six Cuba points. Gonzalo Longo Ilia. He shot. Hernandez, that trusty right boot which doesn't find touch on this occasion. High in the sky from Parks. Lamont gives chase, but Hernandez has been pretty safe. Number two, offside Ross position. Ford. It was a good tackle from Ford, but he was offside. The Pumas play on. And here they go. Hernandez Lobe. The good work continued there from the front row of Argentina. The Desma Aracena. He shot. Back inside Colotto's pass. It's good defence from Scotland. The pass from Patricio Alvesetti ultimately forward to Colotto. Hit the nail on the head, Rupert. Great defence from Scotland. They're being aggressive, getting in the face of the Argentinians. Hernandez. In general, not Numbers. Chat. Numbers. So the stats on tackles. That free kick was for the Argentines having one more player in their defensive line out than the Scottish did. Scots have made almost more than four times the tackles that Argentina have on the stat board anyway. They've defended stoutly. Now they have a chance to attack. Blair. Big Jim Hamilton. Passes back towards the pack and this time Parks. Right boot again. And Agula sends the kick back this time. Intercepted from Dan Parks. Good hands. Lamont keeps it in the field of play. Or did he? He was certainly outside his 22. And Stu Dickinson runs it all the way back. What a bizarre option because he was inside his 22 to start with. If he wanted to kick it out, just stay there. Having a bad day, Lamont. Well, he copped a bad head knock last week. And Surely still not feeling the effects, but Frank Hatton would be asking the question in the grandstand. He wouldn't be hanging around his forwards and following him later on. Twice the hesitation from Lamont. Twice a decision to lament. His forwards once again have to do the defending. Some of the Argentines, we learned from guys like Noriega and Hassan, is just how strong they are in the upper body. Celso is one of those. Roncero, Ledesma, Aracena, but the Scots have wrestled it away. Charge down. Longo Ilia gets chase. Gonzalo, he scores the try. Up there, Gonzalo, Longo Ilia. Jonathan Kaplan is upstairs. It is a try or not try. And now, mate, Laurie Lamont. <laughs> Missed it again. It's one of the two brothers. A little bit of a hesitation. Well, can they rule on an offside? I don't think so. It's just, it's just the grounding. Great charge down. I was just about to say, oh, they got the wrong bike chasing it, but got a great bounce. Did get a great bounce. And fantastic hands. For a big man, absolutely. That was uh, Sean Lamont. So between the two brothers, they're not having a good experience tonight. So the whistle of Joel Judge, you heard in the background, awards the first try of the match. Gonzalo Longa Ilia, his fifth try in his 50th test. If you think the music. It's loud here at Stade de France. Imagine back in Buenos Aires as a nation stops to contemplate the possibility of a Rugby World Cup semi-final. They made the quarters in 99. They were dispatched by the French. Contempomi adds the extras. It's a great hands from Longo Ilia. Dan Parks will be looking for a hole to crawl into just for a moment. He knows the game goes on. 
There's 10 points in it, and Argentina have the lead. A little bit scrappy from the restart, but now the boot to Le Mans. A bit more decisive that time, Rory. The mark claimed by Hernandez. He plays on quickly. The pass out wide. Ledesma Aracena keeps it in. Play on. Dewey funnels it back into Le Mans. The nightmare continues, this time for Sean. So Blair and that right boot of Parks. The try scorer back inside to Corletto. Ignacio finds his touch. The Scots take the line out quickly. Set it up midfield. Simon Taylor crashing it forward. Blair to Parks. Out wide to Lamont. Sean takes the tackle of Little Agula. Great work, Agula. Still an amateur for the Hindu club in Argentina. And Augustine Pichon. Such a wise head on experienced shoulders. Yeah, the Argentines, you can see they're going to just continue to turn up the heat on the Scottish via their field position. The last try purely came from being inside the Scottish 22 and putting pressure on their kick. No, he wasn't there. So that time the penalty against the Argentinians for pulling Jim Hamilton down in the line out. Yeah, he was still in the air. The, the uh, Argentines there, Albacete, actually took hold. You can see he's in the air now. He's already started to come down. You really can't make impact on a player until his feet have hit the deck. Under 15, under 15, please. That's more a safety Absolutely. issue more than anything else. I've seen guys in that scenario flip straight onto their head. It's can be pretty dangerous. But they get up so high, don't they? As you know, Chenny doing a lot of that stuff. It's scary. It's a wonderful piece of television. In the leads, the backdrop. McCall, the hooker. Woods, the halfback. Tune, jumping at four. Then down the coach. As Scotland try to execute something similar. They do well. Blair to Parks, and this time Webster slips. Gets up and goes again. Less than four minutes to go, and the Scots would dearly right, love to right, answer right. back with points. So the Pumas drive over the top. Joel it's Judge it's finds fault. Ronciero looks bemused, but I guess you take your fate into your own hands in kicking range when you drive through the opposition ruck. And that's the discipline I mentioned before the game. I think initially he wasn't too bad. He was actually coming through where he's supposed to. However, yes, he got he a little bit carried yet. away. Yes, they could. But you're right inside this range. Quite possibly, uh, it might not have been uh, a direct illegality, but you give the referee every uh, reason to blow a penalty in that situation, especially when you're going one out. And this area of the field, the referee's going to be particularly sensitive to that kind of thing. It's just not worth the risk. Not when you got this bike kicking. So Parks kicked the first. <laughs> Patterson kicks the second for Scotland. Three plus three equals six. They trail by a converted try in the shadows of half time. The colour of the crowd comes to life. Well, there's still a chance, the Scottish. They've got to get their recycle back on track. They've got to defend their way back into this game. So Celso, the tap down from the restart. It was a good kick from Hernandez. Hernandez Love finds Longo Ilia. This is the other brother. Juan Martin, Fernandez Love. He shot. Finds the Rodrigo Roncero. Back to the left they come. And it's Fernandez. Well, it was actually Celso who was dispossessed on the run. That's Princess Margaret. 
and Heather Sorry? will be Vernon Pugh from memory. Right? Oh, he knows that's his royalty, that's Ben Darling. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that's Sid Miller. Sid Miller. Sorry, it was Vernon Pugh. He was Coming former, here? former, the yeah. late former. Well, he got so Princess here. Margaret right, I think. And uh, the Princess Anne. Well, that was my first instinct. I was happy to go up the prop forward. In hindsight, I got it wrong. Plenty of cup Republicans. <laughs> Apologies to all concerned back home. One thing we know is that they'll be very happy with England's victory yesterday against the Wallabies. And in that respect, we eat some humble pie. Joel Judge, a penalty to Scotland. Yeah, he's pinged the Argentinian back row for not staying bound. Great from too early. I guess in their enthusiasm to put plenty of pressure on a Dan Parks kick, they ended up giving a penalty away. I'm not sorry, I'm the line, I'm the line. Wait, I'm the line. Right, I'm the line. Ross Ford. One of many Scots out there who ply their trade at a club level for the Glasgow Warriors. Seconds remaining on the clock in this first half. A little box kick. Blair gives Lamont the opportunity to chase. It's the the Pumas in fringe. And that will be it. Number one. Number one. Number one. Joel Judge. There's one more issue to sort out. That's Rodrigo Roncero. Or Nathan Hines can't get in there quick enough. Australian flavour to that fracker. And that will be half time. At Stade de France, Argentina have it. 13 6. We'll be back in a moment with Bill Woods at the half time analysis. Argentina is on a five match winning streak against Scotland. They're in, they're in pretty good shape in this game as well. Scotland has relied very much on kicking. They seem to lack much penetration with the ball in hand, where Argentina has looked the more dangerous side when running the ball and indeed have scored a try, although that was off a charge down. Let's look at the highlights so far in this first half. 13 points to six. Felipe Contempomi missed an early attempt at penalty goal. He's been a very accurate kicker. He is the second highest point scorer at this Rugby World Cup with 53. And he was named in this game despite suffering a bout of flu this week. There was some doubt about his selection. How about this for opening the scoring? Dan Parks taking the role of kicker from Chris Patterson because of the range of the attempt. And that set the kilt wearers in a frenzy. Halfway through the first okay. half. Argentina on the counter-attack. And so far, Scotland haven't really got much of a payload from their midfield kicks. Argentina have managed to defuse most of those. There hasn't been a lot of midfield threat at all from the Scots. They're kicking mainly for position. And this is the dangerous tackle rule. And it was well explained by the commentary team. So Contapomi gets the chance to tie up the score in the 22nd minute. And he's a very straight, accurate kicker most of the time, Contapomi. And this was around the time Argentina started to get a bit of a grip on the game. It became 6-3. And in the 32nd minute, not long after that penalty kick was taken, we saw a try in the meantime. Vigorous Scottish defence. They've been a little bit out muscled and outpaced when Argentina's run the ball at them. They've fought very, very hard. On this occasion, though, it backfires. Charge down. Longo Elia somehow manages to beat two Scottish defenders to the ball, and that could be a crucial try. Italy scored a try against Scotland in their pool match. The only try of the game and was still beaten by a brace of Chris Patterson penalty goals. 
So if Scotland can maintain field position, they could still be well in this game. But that is proving very difficult because Argentina were getting on top with the conversion. That left it at 13-3 and a late reply in the half. Gentlemen, can you see Scotland getting back into this match? Well, at 13-3, the Scots will need to talk at half-time about how they can manage that. Ben Darwin. They simply have to change the way they're playing the game. They're defending quite well at the moment. They're not allowing the Argentines to get any clean breaks, basically. The only opportunities they had was off, uh, off the charge count. Yeah, well, despite the fact that Scotland are seeking field position dominance, they're not getting it. Argentina there, you can see territory-wise, 63% to 37. So their game plan that they want to execute, they haven't been able to do it today. 13-6 is the score at halftime, of course. Chris Patterson added another three uh, to the scoreboard for the Scots, so they're within a converted try. So, one of these teams will be going home at the end of this section of quarter-final matches. Will it be Scotland or Argentina? Another 40 minutes will tell us. The Scots have still not missed a kick at goal in this Rugby World Cup, but one thing that they are stuck on is their quarterfinal performances. Remember, they went to the semis in 1991, but since then they've not only lost all their quarterfinal matches, but they've conceded 30 points or more in every one of those defeats. Argentina is almost halfway there again. So the tools in the shed that Frank Haddon was talking about need to be produced in the next 40 minutes. Rip McCall, Ben Darwin and Ben Tune with the call. That's how long there is left in the quarter-final stages of the tournament. And the question for the Scots is, where do they find a try? Because, dare I say it, I think they'll need to score a try if they want to win this match. The only thing I can think of, midfield offset piece. We've seen the Argentinians at times, particularly the concert ponies, can come up out of the line and give them an opportunity. Well, they've only let one try in, so in fairness, if they... If if they continue to they continue to defend particularly well and hold the Argentinians to that single try, as sad as it may seem, they can actually win this game for penalty goals. Well, it has been a game of one side trying to out-frustrate the other side. At the moment, Argentina are on top. Scotland didn't score a try last week against Italy. No joy in that column tonight either. So the kick to Blair and Mike Blair, the midfield bomb, that has almost gone straight up and down on the one spot. And Joel Judge, another offside penalty. Well, this is this, uh, this uh, decision where the players in front of the kicker, the Scottish kicker, the referees now want them to actually be retreating. So not just standing their ground and waiting for the Scottish player to put them on side. The referee wants them to be actually moving backwards. It's a bit hard when the ball gets put up and down on the same spot. That's what spot. I was thinking. <laughs> I guess it comes back to the kick and the kick from the side that was ultimately penalised. It was, it was a bad kick from Mike Blair and his team pays the ultimate price. Because here are Argentina with the first opportunity in this half. Six, 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 Andrew six, Henderson is out there for Scotland, by the way. He knows how to score tries. He scored three against the Irish a few weeks leading up to this tournament. Zola Longo brings it down to the blue and white of Argentina. And Argentina, a side who has been able to mix up the tactics of kicking and frustrating with the art of scoring tries. They have the advantage. P shot almost slices through. And the penalty. No penalty. Uh, one, blue player across. Tackle in the ball. Well, that's just gifting Argentina three points. Tackle in the ball. Not even two minutes into the second half. Ill discipline from the Scots. Dragging them all down. Again, the Argentines are so patient in everything they do. They just get in that red zone. They either pick and go or they maul until the Scots make a mistake. Three more points. 
I guess I could understand the Scots wanting to pull that down if it was right on the try line, but it's, it's still 20 metres out. I just don't think that type of urgency was needed. And they've been defending well, the Scots, at the point of the breakdown. At this end of the field, Felipe Contepomi, qualified doctor, probably diagnosed his own flu and decided that he was up for the task tonight. He kicks another three. So that lead back out to 10 for Argentina. They find the first points in the second half. Desma, Aracena was dispossessed. So Nathan Hines does well. This time, Alistair Hogg lays it back. Blair Parks almost found Webster outside the defence. A potential weakness there for Argentina. O'Driscoll exploded it last week. Blair goes right, the pass inside. Jim Hamilton is unceremoniously dumped. Hines back inside. Patterson driven back in the tackle. So Argentina earned the advantage. They defended well. The Scottish were just starting to find a little bit of quick ball and taking it to the line. And the thing is, no matter what you do, no matter when you get the ball, you've got to be aggressive in the contact. Otherwise, you get taken back. And I think that was Blair there who took the ball going backwards. It was just smash back. But do they know what to do, the Scots? I mean, you know, when they get in a, in a position to to launch an attacking raid like that. Well, like I said, at the very least, that was Patterson, my apologies. You've just got to be aggressive. Well, that feed wasn't straight ball. Good point, Ben Darwin. This World Cup has seen by far the most aggressive breakdown contests of any World Cup to date. It has really been a battle. So Pichot with the clearance, the pass, and then the kick straight down the middle of the field. And Chris Patterson looks to make amends, steps towards the referee. Judge does his best to dodge the Scots and Dan Parks. A little kick over the top. We know they've got that tool in the toolbox. Corletto unleashes. Let it go and snapped it towards the line. Patterson filthy with Lamont in field. Not sure if you see the replay, but uh, Chris Patterson. Fair enough, too. That was a half hearted stick your hand up and touch the ball. <laughs> Both brothers are just having a tough day at the office. How bad does it have to get to get dragged? Well, one of them might be. I think Chris Patterson is playing in the centres. We'll get confirmation of that in a moment. Well, Henderson is on the field. Knock on. Scrum loop. So the scrum to Scotland. We might get an indication from this movement who is actually playing where in the backs. Crutch. Touch. Balls engage. You notice the Argentine second rowers are binding around the sides. They're not crutch binding at all. More side shoulders. We have a look from the shot on the top. You can see the right shoulders there of the Argentine second rowers. They're side binding. Part of their bajada. Well, I didn't notice that. Door, but uh, Balls and yes. the good old crutch bind. The only team in the world that does it internationally. And it works pretty well. That was a good scrum from the Pumas. But the Scots have it. Lamont is still there. And his brother as well. So the Lamont brothers remain on the field. Mike Blair. Looks like Henderson. Henderson on for Dewey. Advantage to Scotland. Patterson can't find a way through, so we'll come back for the penalty. Got the Argentine play here for not rolling away after making the tackle. I think the referees are cottoning on to that tactic that we've seen the very good open side flankers get away with for a long time. Chris Patterson, the experience of 80 tests under his belt, 
This is 81st. 612 points. Only Gavin Hastings ahead of him on the Scottish list. And from the penalty, he uh, says to his kicking counterpart on the same side, of course, Dan Parks. He can have this one. Well, we know he can make the distance. Pretty much a carbon copy of the kick. He successfully converted in the first half. So once again, Dan Parks protecting this 100% record. Rugby World Cup 2007. One from one this evening. It's a long way from Dundas. And a blemish on the boot of Dan Parks. Never looked like it, really. It's a big, big, big clearance from Argentina. They turn it around in the blink of an eye. I think Dan Parks on that occasion was guilty of just trying to kick that ball too hard. The first time, the first conversion he made from that distance out, barely looked like he was trying. Sweet off the boot. On that occasion, he stabbed at it. Unsuccessful. So the Glasgow Warrior, Ross Ford. The baby face took it from Scotland. Finds Nathan Hines. The experience. Henderson has some experience as well. Lamont looking for some work. He carries it forward. And Blair, the little dummy, finds Simon Taylor. Henderson on to Lamont. Lamont squeezes through. That's better from the Scots. But where was his support? His forward's just arriving now. Patricio Albacetti says thank you very much. Fernandez Lobe. Carlos Ignacio. Augustine Pichon. And Hernandez. Borges gets chase. Patterson fumbles, knocks it back. Webster takes it forward. He was sandwiched in a tackle. Borges a little groggy in the aftermath. Once again, the Pumas look to turn it over, and they have. Roncero did well. Contrapomi steps back inside. He fell the wrong way. It was a good tackle. I think Dan Parks made it. It was a great tackle. There's no way that ball is coming back on the Argentinian side. The decision not releasing. Well, it's not Dan Parks because he's standing up over the play. Would have been Take Henderson, off. the replacement player. Haddon would be happy with that. Wait. Okay. Yeah, great tackle using his strength to turn and twist. Put to Pomi. So he's facing. The Scott side, and then the cavalry arrives, and as I mentioned, there's just no way that ball was going to come back. So the man from Perpignan, Rumas Alvarez Corrales, replaces Carlos Ignacio Fernandez Lobe. There the ball is there. Well, this is Lamont, one of their first at genuine attacking raids with ball in hand. Unfortunately, they wasted the opportunity. He had no support, he got isolated, and the Argentinians are really starting to get on top of the Scots at the breakdown. One of the great dangers in rugby is that when a man makes a clean break, the rest of his side just stands and watches what's going on and forgets they've got to make a clean. And you can't be a spectator, you've got to work as hard as you can off the ball, make sure you're the first there to get the clean out. That's what caused the turnover. Well, the English did it so effectively yesterday against the Wallabies. They dominated the breakdown. They rattled George Gregan and the back line was disjointed. The Cubans are up by 10. There's half an hour to go. And they come away with it. Such is their style. The trend of turning it over. The pass to Contrapomi. The short pass to Leto was flying, but... No, no, I said that then short. Because it was interesting for you almost hung on to it. I don't think that Contempomi was looking for Corletto, but Corletto was certainly looking for the pass. Yeah, you're right, Rupert. Contempomi was actually looking to hit his winger, but Corletto, as he does, just flies 
from that fullback position and enters the line at absolute blistering pace. Be held onto that, could have been on for young and old. So we talk about specific communication here, because he didn't tell him exactly where he was. So Parks back inside, Henderson. Back inside again, Blair, this time to the forwards. That's passive from Alistair the Alistair Hogg on the back foot. Back to Parks, and again, the high kick is the option. Borges comes in, Lucas Borges. Socks down, head up. Takes the ball well. He shot. And Hernandez this time, and... Oh, oh! On a string. Juan Martin Hernandez. Perfect strike. That is the sort of kick that forwards like to look up and see. It gives them incentive to do well at the line-out, but Scotland has managed to pull it off. Well, Scotland tried to make that throw over the 15 and only just got away with it on that occasion. Put them team into some serious trouble. So it's quite appropriate that the man who gave the Argentinians field position with that wonderful right boot, Hernandez, puts it on the left and kicks a field goal to take them three further ahead. Leguizamon is on for the Fumas. So the band continues to play and the boot of Hernandez continues to fire. It is white hot at the moment. He had very little angle to work with there. Fantastic result. Marcelo de Freire, he's been at the helm for the Pumas for so long now. The line outs are even. Leah. Parks goes behind. Finds Alistair Hogg chiming in in the centres. Well, the Scots you can see now are the first team to stray in their game plan. They're actually having going to have a decent crack and try to run around the Argentinians. That is exactly what the Argentines would want. The thing at the moment is how far behind the advantage line is everything happening for the Scots. All their plays, they're not, they've got to happen at the point of attack. Because otherwise, there's Craig Smith. Okay, fine. Well, the smelling salt. And check the body shape. Big the one on him. that Ben Dowell alluded to looks like an extra from Braveheart, Craig Smith. It's not on yet. And the Argentine scrum has been doing well. Again, we talked about that binding. But Patricia Noriega, the ex Wallaby tight head prop. Oh, that's a poor delivery at the back. Is there the forwards coach? He's done a pretty good job with them. He was on the field, he was tackled. He was tackled. No, no. Ten. Ten. So Longo Elia is taking that one casually and he pays for complacency. Number one. Well, Number five. Four changes here at the same time. Smith and McLeod coming on the fourth. Here come the Scottish Cavalry. It's all or nothing. 20 minutes to go and more. The replacements are made. They will need to make their impact. Nice gun show from the Scottish there. The big boys. Well, these, these tight jerseys make it so that your uh, biceps are showing all the time. And here comes Omar Hassanik's ACT Brumbies tight head prop. Very experienced test footballer. Can sing. An opera tenor, I believe. So showing all the skills at the moment, the Argentinians, in every respect. Do the Scots have the tools in the toolbox good enough to win this match? They need to attack. That's what they launch now. Lamont takes the tackle of Contiponi. Taylor at the back. Parks beats it out wide. The replacements are on for Scotland. Back inside. Through the legs of Kelly Brown. 
what's up? First look on blue. Yeah. Well, Craig Smith not happy with that, but Such yeah, was the call. You'll notice as Lamont went into the breakdown there, he Take. bridged again to put the ball back, but no decision on the referee, and it's just a little bit of a lack of Take consistency. And speaking of lack of consistency, it's the Scots at the breakdown that are really having some difficulty at the moment. Andrew Henderson was the man injured in interesting circumstances. Yeah, he just got literally his feet wait, wait, in a wait. tackle from the Argentines, his feet taken out from underneath this him. Crutch. Fantastic Crutch. tackle. Touch. Balls engage. So Henderson gets off the merry-go-round and takes his place in the back line. The scrum screwing pee shot through the legs of Longo and the boot of Hernandez. Lamont. Kick the chase. But that's out on the full, so a forgettable night for Lamont at this point. Yeah, it's starting to become inexcusable from him. One mistake at this level you can probably is acceptable. Two or three similar mistakes, just not good enough. It's hard though when your brother's also having a bad game. He seems to multiply the whole issue because you keep calling Nathan Lamont and mistakes are being made. Well, Hugo Southwell, who played fullback for the Scots and the Six Nations, is on the bench, so Frank Hart hadn't could quite possibly use that card any moment. Fernandez Lobe sets it up for the Pumas. The Scots in the crowd try to rally with song. But Omar Hassan wrestles through the forwards. Longo Ilia. They content to play this game. Argentina, the patience and the platform. Augustine Pichot, Hernandez, finds Coletto, Coletto, Chris Patterson was there. One Martin Hernandez, the halfback and 5'8 swap. Gonzalo Longo, Pichot. Fernandez Lobe. Craig Smith trying to get his big paws on it. Ledesma Aracena comes away with it. So the game just slows down for the moment. The Pumas, they have control. And that is through the boot of Fernandez. And the mind there starting to gain ascendancy the Argentinians playing smart rugby just probing a couple of phases and if nothing's on content just to pluck the corners and the Scots on the other hand are now a little bit of panic set in getting a little bit loose trying to throw the ball around a fair bit it's like Fernando Lobez there just hyper extended his elbow in that contact point he's down Nathan Sharp had the same injury two weeks ago so the Pumas are sucking the life out of the Scots here at Stade de France. Scotland with their try line at their backs. Offside position, number seven. So Fernandez Lobe pinged for offside by Joel Judge in the penalty to Scotland. Okay. Well, that stat there. As depressing as it sounds, is real. Over 60 kicks in this game. Please, Bill, Bill. So it was Leguizamon who was the one who'd injured his shoulder, sorry, his elbow. One Manuel Leguizamon. In his 21st test, the Scots do well at line out time. Big Craig Smith. Yeah, says Charles Smith. <laughs> and he knocked it on, unfortunately. Coletto, opportunity, beckons for Ignacio. But Patterson comes away with it. The crowd roar. Patterson finds Ford, the hooker. Ross Ford, the pass. To Lamont back inside, Sean Lamont. 
Scotland are not done with yet. Does it out. That wide they come. They've got the numbers. Still through Henderson. Wide they come. Owen Murray. Webster back inside. It's a hot piece of soap at the moment. Owen Murray once again gets involved. Two Pumas down in back play. They must have the numbers. Chris Cassada. Goes left. Back inside to Cassada. Is that the try that Frank Hatton is looking for? They flirt with the touchline once again. Jonathan Kaplan will be the judge. Not obstruction on the scrum of White. Before, before in goal. Regardless of the result, it's just good to see the Scots having a decent crack in this game. Well, he has remained in the field of play. The Scottish replacement. That is Kelly Brown. Did wonderfully well. And he finds another replacement, Chris Cusseter. Yep. He shot there. It's a try. Blowing up. It's a try, right? He shot was blowing up, but he got held back. But... Well, if you're looking for a reason, Omar Hassan was way too high into the tackle there. But why does it take 62 minutes and a reserve prop in Craig Smith to finally break the defensive line? So Kelly Brown and Chris Cusseter combined to score the try. And the conversion is significant. The Pumas are up by eight. If the conversion is successful, it will be less than a converted try. Chris Patterson hasn't missed one this tournament. This is his most important up to this point. The degree of difficulty is high. But Chris Patterson knows his way to the posts. Yes, he does. Brilliant, Chris Patterson. So the Scots breathe some life into this match, but Nathan Hines at the restart. Very disappointing. Hernandez, it looks sweet off the boot, but it's out to the right. Well, the Argentinians thought they had advantage there. Whatever the referee said, advantage was over. Well, the same as Luke McAllister in yesterday's quarter-final. He was sure that he had advantage for a penalty. That's why he went for the drop goal, but a different interpretation here. Well, this was an advantage from a knock-on, so probably a shorter one, if that makes sense. They used it, and they missed the kick. Longo Elia. Little chip kick there. That was great work. Come on, come on, come on. Hernandez showing all the skills, at least off the boot. Leguizamon wrestles possession back. And Fernandez Lobe goes for a gallop. He finds the paint of the 50. Stay back. I'm not sure if that man was expecting the pass. Not positive he wasn't. He took it forward. That was the only option he had. This time, Contrapone. One bounce and once again, Lamont deflects it into touch. Such is his night. Okay. Well, the hard part is, once you start making mistakes, your brain goes to mush, and every time the ball comes at you, there's a sense of panic. Yeah, in fairness to him, that slow, that slow motion replay didn't do it justice. That ball was absolutely flying. And it skidded off the track, didn't it? Oh, it skidded off the track like the SCG on the fifth day. Congratulations to Craig Lowndes and his racing team for taking out the Bathurst title. King of the Mountain for 2007. That warm. 
to Ledesma Aracena. 64 tests. That's experience. But they've made a meal of it. Legizamon. Well, he seemed to be under little pressure, but he knocked it on cold. Well, they've just decided basically Scotland to defend at two, have a drifting lifter between the two back groups. So trying to catch a ball where they are at the moment may not be the smartest option. Good scrum though by the Argentines. Trouble. Turnover. Oh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, more 90. More 90 Marcello degrees. Freda. Great scrum. Just what the doctor ordered. Gee, you'd be happy with that. The crowd Push once back. again. Push back. Let loose with Le Marseille. Time off. The backs would love that. They go from defending, which they don't right. like, to getting to attack again. You never tell us that. <laughs> so a new man on the field for Argentina, a new haircut. Consapomi exits. Hernan Siniosa. The Puma scrum. Once again, a powerful platform and Longo Ilya lays it back. Will it be the drop goal from Hernandez? It seems the likely option. They want to get out beyond a converted try. Use it! Another hit from Rodrigo and Cerro. Augustine Pichot, a little maestro in this situation. Leguizamon. Hernandez is going to run it. Maybe the pass had to be thrown then. The center Losa takes it forward. His first touch. Montepone puts his head down and burrows forward. He's got his strength back, Felipe. Augustine Pichot once again stays patient. They go the blind. Alvarez Carellas. They're 20 metres out from the try line. And again, that structure, which breaks down. No con. Yes, reasonable. Good defence from the Scots. No con. They've definitely got a new lease on life since that try. They dropped the ball. Their line speed has increased tenfold. Their effectiveness at the tackle has been really good. Well, I think it was a run from Craig Smith to almost ignite the Scots in a way. Like those smelling salts. And the big man charging through. They followed on from there, scored the try. Now young Scott Lawson takes the place of Ross Ford in the hooking position. Southwell is on now for Rory Lamont. No, you cannot put in the ball because it's trying to move. Don't push too early. Don't push too early. He cannot put in the ball. Thank you very much. It's all a question of when you've put this pressure on. It's up to the tight end prop here in Hassan to tell his team when the ball's coming in. No, 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 no. We are too far. We are too far. The Scots have got to be as aggressive as they can on contact as the pressure comes late okay. with the Bajada. Both sides, both sides. Both sides. Late push. The words of Trisha Noriega. I like to come. That's how he says scrum. Slowly, <laughs> slowly. Touch. Touch. Pause. Engage. The Bajuara. Again? Jean Judge. Come on, come on. No, no, no. Both sides. His patience will wear thin. Both sides. The last opportunity for this scrum, and then he has to Touch. guess on a decision. Touch. Pause. Engage. Yeah, pushing before the ball went in. They've got some numbers wide, but Henderson crashes through the midfield. The Scots, they're down by six. Just over ten minutes remaining in the last of our quarterfinals. The winner of this game will play South Africa next week at this very ground. And Argentina. They do so well. Frustrate their opponents into error and come away with the ball. The hit and the gallop from Fernandez Lobe. 
He shot. Hernandez finds some space out wide. Coletto slips over. So the Argentinians not quite decisive at the moment. See the effects of the counter rucking. Augustine Pichot through that counter rucking makes the mistake. That's right. Well, it's it's really the ability to push the players back onto your own player. Pichot had his hands on the ball there. And Senilosa was pushed back onto him by the counter rucking of the Scots. And it just creates enough to. But there's little issues. Craig Smith. I mean, technically Drop. speaking, counter rucking Shoulders. is illegal. Shoulders it's supposed to be curve. bound to somebody Shoulders. before you enter a ruck. The semi final spot on the line here at Stade de France. Both sides to suck in the big, deep breaths and get ready to unleash Barney, okay, crutch. the fury of the final 10 minutes. Touch. Balls engage. The Scots are in striking distance. Good scrum from the Pumas, Taylor fed from the back. Sean Lamont is still out there. Okay. Casada. Taylor once again gets his hands on the ball. Parks, the kick deflected from the Pumas, it's play on. Coletto, the timing of Ignacio. That's why blue. He shot. Hernandez, well, he's in two minds. Hernandez at the moment. Contempomi. Great skills under pressure. He slipped. Somehow managed to hang on to it. Senilosa. Goes down the left-hand side. Finds a man with space. It's the hooker. Ledesma Aracena. Once again, the counter rucking. This time, Senilosa does a better job. Albacete. Three legs to P shot. Hernandez. This time, the kick. Bit of a nothing kick, but it soaks up some time and it finds touch. The Scottish are defending like their lives dependent on it. They're doing a great job. It's keeping them in the game. It's kept them. It's kept them in this game the entire way. Hernandez trying a bit of razzle dazzle there. Luckily, the man outside for the pony. Fantastic hands. So it looks like Nathan Hines. The kick from Wagga Wagga on his back. Is it Cramp? It is Cramp. He looks at him in the clouds. He's been working incredibly hard all day. He's been there at the breakdown. He's been defending their line out, covering an enormous amount of space. And play. So the atmosphere in Paris in the last 24 hours has been phenomenal. There's no place for traffic on the Champs-Élysées last night. In the celebration of French supporters, the tears of all black supporters. Here come the Scots. Joel Judge, happy to let that play on. Jason White, the skipper, goes Cusser. This time the Pumas put the pressure on through their counter. Lamont, the hear Parks yelling at Sean Lamont that he had to pick and go himself. Parks didn't want the ball. Parks again. This time they go wide. Webster. Simon Webster back inside and Chris Patterson. A little bit of soccer skills there from Roncero. Craig Smith to the rescue again. Inside. Great work from Number Craig five Smith. Inside. He's desperation stuff. Patterson doesn't look comfortable under the breakdown. He's gone in three times tonight, a little bit soft. The first hit and cop tonight, he got absolutely resold onto his back. Ten, ten, ten. Pion, Pion. Looks like a bikey, Craig Smith, doesn't he? Well, he certainly looks like he means business. That's a massive kick. This is what Scotland have been waiting for. Well, they've had a little bit of success with their defensive line out tonight. Mine's been running it well. Let's see where they try to defend. They've got to make a decision where they try to defend the front or the middle. It's 
up the third ball, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so the Pumas will be defending this one, and they'll be defending like their lives depended on it. Oh, they turned it up really well. I heard a whistle, but uh, in the confusion, Argentina come away with it. Any climax of sorts. The big right boot of Hernandez. So Scott McLeod made amends in the second line out. Lamont is out on the wing. Santa makes the tackle. The Scots. They can almost see a semi final. The Argentinians defend desperately. The pass shuffled on to Scott Lawson. Pass it up. Parks do. He finds Nathan Hines running in the centres again. The flick out the back. It's a little bit disjointed from the Scots. Chris Patterson finds some traffic out to the right. The centre Parks. Still they go. The tackle needs to be made, and it's made by Corletto. The Scots throw caution to the wind. Taylor. There's less than five left. Once again. A Rugby World Cup cliffhanger. Craig Smith. Pass it up. What have they got, the Scots? Well, it wasn't much. But the Argentinians once again not holding their feet. Number five, stay on your feet. Six Sorry? points down. You play for the line out, don't you? Four minutes to go, okay. Have a look here, uh, Scott McLeod. Another example there of a bridge where the player tries to create a bridge over the ball so the opposition can't have a decent crack yeah, yeah, yeah. at it. Well, let yeah, yeah, yeah. That tackle. Craig Smith, the brave heart next to the turn Viking, brings down Roncero. Where is that going? Oh. Chris White had the perfect view. Borges protests. But Scotland the Brave ready to rumble at Stade de France. Well, let me have another try at this. It's now Scottish ball. Their throw. They're probably going to go for the drive. It's the obvious option. Make it hard for the kick, though, and the conversion if they want to win this game because they'll be wide. The history of matches between these two sides go down to the wire. That time the Scots bring it down. They brought it down immediately. Hence why they're not going to get penalised. So Chris Patterson hasn't missed a kick all tournament. If the Scots score, he'll have one to put them in front. But they have to score. What a lot of hands, Argentine hands in the ruck there. Argentina defend for their country. Casada shifts the point of attack. Once again, the tackle is made. Casada digs in. This time he goes wide. Parks. The tackle on Henderson. The Pumas are desperate, and so are the Scots. Turn over. And on his feet, stay back, stay back. the Argentinian Mami's defender. Off. We thought he turned it over, but it comes back to the it's Scots. Away, away. Less than two minutes remaining. Stay back, eight. And Scotland, midfield, ten metres out. Well done. Stay back. Okay. Owen Murray lends his weight. The weight of the Scottish nation there as well. Phase after phase, the Pumas defend. Now it goes wide, the kick across field. And then this is there. It's gone too long. Oh, Dan Parks. 22, 22, 22. Well, that was a great 22. opportunity. Too much. I mean, he's got a big boot on him, we know that. It okay. was too high and too long. It was. Even if Lamont could catch that. It's going to be pretty easy for Coletto and Co to, to drive them over the sideline. 
so he'd like to have that one back, Dan Parks. And the kick drives deep to Lamont. He almost makes the halfway. Was that the final opportunity for Scotland the Brave? Henderson to Webster. Still they come. They are brave in blue. The dark blue of Scotland. They have the numbers. Nathan Hines gets around his man. Still it's on for Scotland. Back inside. The Pumas pounce on it. And Pishok, he's not sure whether it's over. There's still 10 seconds left on the clock. Pishok must have watched last night's game. He was running back to Buenos Aires. The time was not up on the clock, and so this scrum will pack down. Hassan knows he can have an impact on this game now. He can get the side up as closest to us as he's trying to do now. Pressure on the scrum. It comes down to this. They knock it on. Argentina, their arms in the air. Joel Judge blows his whistle three times. And it's three cheers for the Pumas. They've made the semi-finals for the first time in Rugby World Cup history. Yeah, they were a bit static, and quite rightly so. It wasn't their best performance by a long shot, but it was good enough. It was good enough to get them through to the next round, the semi-final round. They live to fight another day. Translation of that is that Argentina are absolutely ecstatic with this result. They will play South Africa next week in the semi final. They'll put some genuine heat on the South Africans, particularly the scrum at the end there. That's what caused the turnover. Good pressure again. The Scots, they tried so hard, but they didn't really attack the ball in hand until the 62nd minute. The Argentines got it done and they move on. Frank Haddon's face. Said it all and he mouthed the words when he saw that scrum debacle. That's it. That's it. Didn't look as happy as he did in the first match. He knows he's got some work to do. South Africa await Argentina in the semi final. The other between England and France will be back in a moment. Once again, Scotland loses in a quarter-final, but for the first time, Argentina gets an opportunity to stake a very important claim in world rugby. They're sort of in this limbo, aren't they, in between the Northern Hemisphere sides, which have the uh, Six Nations, the Southern Hemisphere, which has Sanzar. And so uh, it's good to see Argentina for the world game uh, doing well at a World Cup. Well, they've emerged from the limbo now, haven't they? They're in a semi-final. Absolutely, and obviously setting aside the result of this tournament, the biggest result for Argentina, and this should be, hey, we deserve to be part of one of these tournaments. We mm. are good enough to compete against the best teams in the world, week in, week out. Well, let's hear from Augustin Pichot, the captain. Augustin, every single match you play is a, is a tough one, of course, like the Irish game. And now you've managed to beat Scotland. I mean, that's a fantastic result. You must be absolutely over the moon, although it's a very difficult clash, of course. Yes, I think we were very tired, and Scotland played really well, so we hold it, we hold to it, we stuck with it. We wanted to win, we wanted to be in the quarter semi-finals, and we are. Regarding the tactics, obviously, uh, you know, you had to adjust because they, they didn't play like the Irish, they didn't play like the French, and they really gave you a good run for, the, for your money. Yes, I think Scotland was really believes in what they play there. They're very good, so we, we, always, we, under, we didn't underestimate it. I think they play with a lot of pride, with a lot of passion. I think it's a great team. I have a lot of respect for the Scottish, and they achieved being in the quarterfinal, so respect to them. Congratulations and good luck for the uh, semi-final against South Africa. Thank you very much. Augustine Pichot, the captain, Marcello Lafreda, congratulating his players. Uh, he's had a lot to say during this tournament about various things, usually the rules. Um, but then again, a few of the coaches have had discussions about that. I wonder what he'll say this week, leading up against the Springboks. 
Well, they'll have plenty to say. I guess uh, tonight they'll have plenty to celebrate. Have a look at the results uh, over the last five encounters. Argentina 23-19, 25-16, 31-22, 19-17, 16-15. It was on the cards, wasn't it? And uh, the Pumas, uh, in a similar performance, I guess, have ground their way to their first semi-final. Yeah, they have. I guess in the end it doesn't really matter. But like the South Africans, I think they probably took a step back in terms of performance, in terms of, you know, the magic word momentum we keep throwing around. Uh, but they were good enough to get away with the win. And Scotland play a brand of football that can be really annoying and they can frustrate you a lot. And the Argentinians definitely look frustrated out there. Well, come this t time of the tournament, it doesn't matter. you just got to get the wins and then you move on. They'll get the semis. Here's the Scottish captain. Jason, it was a valiant uh, performance out there. But uh, the Argentinians, they just strangled your game. You tried to play open rugby. Obviously, you're disappointed. We made too many mistakes with the ball. They're a tough team to play against. They have a very strong kicking game with Hernandez. We didn't play enough territory. And in the end, we were chasing the game. And they just they kept us out. Now, they're playing that territorial game. Obviously, uh, you know, it's really difficult to keep up with them because they're always pumping the ball up in the air. But uh, you, you did your best. But there was still no way through that, that Argentinian defence. Yeah, you can't can't question the guys commitment and their passion but at this level of rugby you need to be you need to be sharp you need to control the ball well and we didn't do that well enough thanks for your time Jason thanks a lot well they tried to play open rugby for about 20 minutes anyway <laughs> and even then they didn't really get it going till the last 15 or so but apart from that uh, we mentioned earlier Marcello Lafreda doesn't give too many interviews in English uh, there is one here it's not very long but uh, we'll deliver it it's another fantastic performance from, from Argentina, playing your typical game. Obviously, uh, it gets harder every single time, but you managed, you know, to, uh, to produce another top performance against a top rugby nation. Yeah, I think it was very tough, a very tough game. You know, this quarterfinals has been, had been very surprisingly, very surprised what happened yesterday, you know? So we knew that it was, it was going to be a very hard game, Scotland, uh, they, they will never surrender, so we, we knew that. But we make a lot of errors, you know. We, we, we fail in some, some of the parts of the second half, and, and we let them come back to the game. So then we had to suffer a lot. But, well, we are, we are here, we, we are very happy, we are in, in the semi-finals. For us, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good achievement for the country, so we are really going to to be enjoying for for this night and then of course tomorrow we are going to continue with our work so is it forget football in argentina for the moment concentrate on rugby a semi-final clash against the springboks that's fantastic for you guys yeah it's fantastic yeah, i think it's going to be a huge game uh, we have a lot of respect with for the springboks so uh, we are going to be very, very careful and very with, with a lot of brightness you know so uh, it has been uh, maybe never, never that, that the, the soccer in Argentina has been changed. And today was changed. Uh, the, main, the main game, Boca River, has been changed to see us. So we are very happy and we, we want to say hello to the Argentinians because they, they should be very, very happy with us. Which is gracias, Marcelo. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I just got the biggest hospital pass of this Rugby World Cup, didn't I? <laughs> we were told it was going to be a brief interview, but congratulations and thanks to Marcello for giving us an interview that was about as brief as a Scottish winter. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more after this.